Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee here on uh, this Saturday, uh, the 8th of September. We're coming just past 4.30 Eastern time. I thought this would be a good time to uh, update you on uh, everything that's uh, gone on this afternoon with respect to weather models. And this would be relatively timely because we'll have the new uh, advisories uh, coming out from the National Hurricane Center sometime inside this, thir this half hour, and uh, we'll put them on the air. Uh, just a, uh, as always, a reminder, whatever satellites or radars that we show you here, uh, of course, it's all dated. So if you're watching it live, that's fine. But if you're watching this later on on a replay, just bear that in mind. And if uh, there's weather impacting your area, you can check the latest uh, satellites and radars by going to weather.gov. And of course, when it comes to tropical storms and hurricanes, uh, please use official websites like nhc.noaa.gov, the National Hurricane Center, or the National Weather Service website, weather.gov, or your local government officials for in information. Uh, the maps that we show you here uh, are uh, weather model maps. They <clears throat> should not be used uh, for a decision making. Uh, you want to uh, use, uh, you know, if you want to look at the, uh, the Hurricane Center's official forecast, and you can do that by going to uh, nhc.noaa.gov. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what's been happening uh, as far as uh, Florence is concerned, and uh, we'll uh, uh, bring up the afternoon uh, satellite picture here. We're going to start with the wide shot, and there we go. Hang on. And I just wanted to set it up. Doing a few things on the fly today, folks, so just bear with me if I don't have all the maps up <clears throat> ready to go. But... Uh, here on the wider view, you, uh, Florence actually doesn't look like it doesn't really look like it's moved very much today. It's moving very, very slowly, only at about six knots or seven miles an hour. But the shear has definitely uh, abated and you are beginning to see signs that uh, we are uh, getting better organized and uh, that uh, Florence will be become a probably become a hurricane either overnight or, or or on Sunday early on Sunday and if you look closely at the structure of the hurricane there's there's almost a sense and the hurricane sort of point this pointed this out there's almost a ring you can almost see like a ring look to it there uh, in in near the middle the core of this really uh, survived the shear so many times when you have very strong wind shear uh, over hurricanes, uh, you wind up uh, really disrupting the core, and the storms don't come back to their original strength. Uh, we we're yet to we you know remains to be seen where wh whether this one does, but it certainly looks as if the core of the system uh, uh, came away uh, relatively intact, and now it's starting to go to work to put itself together uh, back to perhaps what it was. As I think conditions are certainly favorable. For strengthening, and they actually are going to be favorable for rapid strengthening once we get closer to 60 degrees west and beyond 60 degrees west, because those water temperatures there, from the between the Greater Antilles and Bermuda, uh, up to uh, four degrees Fahrenheit or two a little over two degrees Celsius uh, above average in that zone uh, in the subtropical Atlantic. So uh, the pieces are there for this to certainly go back to a Category Four. Uh, what does it or doesn't it? We'll find out soon enough. It it, it, it may happen as as quickly as later Monday. Here's the um, <clears throat> enhanced uh, uh, satellite loop, uh, the color enhancement. Uh, starting to see is you know occasional flare ups of colder cloud tops uh, in the darker uh, the in the black that shows up there uh, across uh, it, you know right right in the northern semicircle or what appears to be the northern semicircle. Uh, again, not a whole lot of movement here. Uh, the movement today has been generally <coughs> so slightly south of due west at uh, about seven miles an hour or so. And with respect to the latitude, we're getting you know fairly close now to 24 degrees north. Uh, we are still not at 55 degrees west. I don't expect this to cross the uh, 60 degree west longitude here until uh, sometime early during the early morning hours on Monday. And it might take a little bit longer because of the uh, slow movement that we uh, happen to be seeing. So uh, what have we come up with today as far as um, weather models are concerned and, and, and where are we going with all of this? Uh, we were uh, thinking 
that we're getting close to a point now where we should start to see, you know, models uh, we to, to tighten up a little bit or perhaps do some um, maneuvering in one direction or another. We have seen a little bit of change today. Uh, I just want to start with the NAM, uh, which is not going to go out far enough. I just wanted to show you. This is Zero Z Wednesday uh, on the NAM, and uh, at least from the NAM's perspective, it isn't even quite to 70. That was on the 12Z. The 18Z is going to go out a little bit more, but we only have out to 60 hours, so it's really not uh, yet in the uh, NAM's time frame. Uh, the wider view, however, might bring it in there. There it is on the wider view. So it was just on the edge of the map there coming in. So let's see. This is the new NAM. So uh, I'm going to just run my cursor on there. It looks like it's at about 25, 25.8 and 63.1. Just going to see if I can just get a piece of paper here. I just want to keep track of this. So um, 25.8 and 63.1. And this is as of uh, 2 a.m. on Tuesday. I just want to do a little bit of comparison here just to see how the models are handling all this. And this is the old 60. So we'll go back. I'm going to go back uh, 12 hours and take a look at where it had it on, on for the same time frame two runs ago. And it had it at... 26.2 and 62.0. So it actually is, it's about a little less than half of a degree further south, and it's a degree further west on the new NAM. So the NAM uh, is, is a bit faster than its prior runs once it gets past 60. It should start to move. At a, at a faster clip as it, as it get, comes under the influence of that building ridge to the north. So that's 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 an interesting little development on the NAM. Uh, it might be important down the road. It, the, the fact that it's still kind of correcting to the south, uh, I think, uh, is something that we'll have to, that that, that could be a factor uh, in, in the longer haul uh, with all of this. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the, the new GFS. Um, is not out yet. The new the GFS for the same time frame is 25. Roughly, I'm I'm, I'm putting it at the bottom of the L at the same spot so that everybody you know gets an even keel. The GFS is 25.7 and 63.0. So it's actually uh, you know the new NAM is actually uh, almost exactly the same as the GFS. Uh, was for uh, this afternoon on the 12Z run. Uh, so here's the GFS, uh, which continues to take the furthest northeast track. Let's call it the it's with respect to the Carolina coast. It's the one that's furthest uh, further east, and for that matter, th further north. And bear in mind, uh, on this run, it did not make landfall. But there's a couple of things here that I I, I want to I wonder about. Uh, first off, uh, the pressures seem to be okay here at the point where if you want to argue that this is going to become a Category 3 or a Category 4 hurricane, these pressures kind of make sense, getting down to the 940s. That would be supportive of, uh, of 115 knot, 130 mile an hour base Category 4 hurricane. But I wonder strongly... Uh, about a pressure of seeing a 909 pressure east of Cape Hatteras. I just, I, you know, it's, if there's a Category 5 hurricane in that position, I've never, you know, it would be a first. Uh, not to say, I guess it's not impossible, but, you know, it's right over the Gulf Stream, literally. But I kind of find it hard to believe that it's going to be over, it's going to be stalling out moving over water that it would basically is that it has basically upwelled it's on itself on its own and have a pressure down at uh, that low and I'm, I'm just wondering whether the GFS is guilty of um, perhaps having too much northerly component involved here because of the fact that the it has the pressure so uh, incredibly low 
Uh, I, I, I'm just wondering out loud, but nonetheless, it does what it does, which is to, I'm just going to run it backwards. Uh, but here we go again. See, it never really gets the center on the land. It actually keeps it offshore of North Carolina, drops it south, southwestward, and then goes northeast uh, out into the uh, open waters of Atlantic toward um, Nova Scotia. Well, it goes just east of Nova Scotia and certainly threatens Newfoundland, if that's right. And, you know, this is, again, we have to be very careful uh, using every single model run with, um, you know, some kind of certitude because we're still not at the point where we've really figured this out uh, as far as the, um, you know, where, what, where this is going to wind up. Now, the Canadian's done a little shifting on, on its own as well today. It does not have the major hurricane <clears throat> like the GFS does. It brings it to uh, the South Carolina coast. It's a little further north and east from the prior couple of runs, which were taking it in long into the Georgia coast. Uh, so it's kind of moved up by about uh, 60 or 70 miles to the northeast. It brings it inland, then just kind of leaves it, just, so, just slowly meanders it to the northwest. This is all going to be a function of the upper high. That really is where this, you know, we said this earlier, we said this yesterday, and I'm going to say it again. It's all about the upper high, really, here, uh, as far as where is this all going to wind up. And with the, the European today, we're going to have to go to the other map because they, we don't have maps that match up with precip, so we'll just use it with the uh, pressure anomaly. And you can see the European today also did a bit of a shift <clears throat> to the north and brought it inland right there, uh, j just, um, I guess that's southwest of Wilmington, uh, into interior North Carolina, brought it into northeastern North Carolina by, uh, this is a week from today, and then just kind of drifts it back westward and then southward, the remnant low or tropical de depression or whatever it is at that point. This is, of course, a big issue if this happens uh, because of the fact that it's all over land. And, and this is where, again, the, the European and the GFS are really not that different. And neither is the Canadian in terms <coughs> of the overall behavior of the system. The GFS and the European are basically doing the same thing, except the GFS is doing it over water and the European is doing it over land, uh, stalling it out, dropping it southward, and, of course, the GFS being just offshore. Uh, so you want to split the difference uh, between the two of them in, in, in the tracks, and then you're talking about, about all of this happening right along coastal North Carolina and into southeastern Virginia. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, you know, the margin of error is still pretty large. And I, I think it's, it's um, you know, very reasonable for to expect uh, a forecaster to kind of con to continue uh, hedging uh, in terms of where, you know, what the, what the ultimate outcome is going to be. There's, there's still too many variables. All of this, of course, uh, the big problem with the upper high, which I think we could illustrate on the um, on the paint box. So I'm going to bring that up. And I'll start with the Europeans <clears throat> view. I think we can stay on the tight map here. This is going to be for um, uh, uh, Wednesday morning. And just give me one second here so I can bring it up front. Hang on, folks. Just trying to uh, get the paint box up. And there it is. Okay, so uh, this is the, um, here, here, here is your uh, upper high. I'm going to just outline it this. This is outline it. This is Wednesday morning. Just getting uh, everything all set. All right, so here is your upper, the edge, the periphery of your up, upper high. And, you know, notice the ridge, okay? And I'm going to put that in this, this kind of dark, very, very dark red. Uh, the ridge is, pu are, is pushing back westward into the co coast. And remember, winds are, are clockwise around highs. So basically, there's your upper air steering flow. Um, it's it's mostly going to be from the uh, from southeast to northwest. 
So your Hurricane Florence is going to want to move pretty much along the periphery of that ridge. Now, remember, as we move through time and it gets closer to the coast, that ridge is going to change. And that's probably what the European begins to do. Perhaps it, you know, it probably shows if we're going to, I, I'll jump over another 12 hours. And, you know, we do see the ridge. Remember, the gears are always changing. They're not static. Uh, it's rare that they're static uh, for uh uh, 12 or 24 hours so the upper high position is changing and of course the hurricane is changing as well as it moves toward the coastline so we do have a, a bit of a weakness here because of how the high is oriented it's trying to hold on to that that flank uh, that is uh, uh, sitting uh, over the mid-atlantic states and here's the, this is by Thursday morning, you know, your upper high, whoops. All right, come on, behave. Let me draw. Okay. Uh, here's your upper high, the periphery of your upper high. Looks like it's kind of moved a little bit further to the east. You know, you've got that height line. Come on. There we go. And there's your ridge here. So it sort of shifts a little bit further to the north, and at this point, uh, your your your, trop, your your hurricane Florence is just about getting ready to move inland. The, notice, by the way, that the main Canadian jet is way back here and way up here. Okay, so it's all ridge. This is a little bit unusual in that oftentimes in storms that that impact the east coast, and I'm going to draw over it. Uh, over the the jet, but in, in, and I'll do it in black. But oftentimes, if you think back to what we had um, back in uh, late July, early August, with the troughs in the east, this is usually where you see uh, storms, and this is how they get driven up the east coast when you have a trough like this, uh, basically north south southerly flow along the east coast, and this is and when, when that happens, you wind up with storms that. Uh, come out uh, and then accelerate into the trough and then move northward. That is not what is happening this time around. And because of the fact that you're dealing with an upper high, the upper flow, the upper wind flow is very weak relative to the, when you have it with a deep trough. I mean, you can see storms move at 20, 30, 40 miles, even 50 miles an hour into a, a, a deep trough that is uh, in the uh, Atlantic, uh, but uh, instead uh, you, along the uh, Atlantic seaboard. <clears throat> but with the ridge, you know, you're talking about much slower motion. And then when the ridge weakens, unless another trough is approaching, uh, you basically watch your steering currents just just uh, collapse. And then the thing just sits there. And I, I think that's, you know, the models are kind of trying to telegraph that, that when the ridge does ultimately collapse, uh, you're going to have a problem uh, going into 120 hours, uh, 144 hours on the European. You can you can see it. There's absolutely no flow here. Uh, the there's a high off the east coast. Uh, there's a ridge back, an upper high ridge that that shows itself back from Missouri over to Kansas, and you know what? That's it. And then after that, it just still kind of sits there, and then drops southward and southeastward, and you still have a remnant showing up uh, in North Carolina out uh, a week from Tuesday, for God's sake. But at this point, by the way, notice the jet uh, in Canada is lowering. We do start to see a significant change in that the whole the ridge of the east does uh, start to break down. But this is a long way out in the long range. So uh, the, the, I, think, I think we're getting to a point where... Uh, we can sort of, you know, sort of have zero in uh, on an area of greater risk. Uh, and I think it's going to be, I'm still holding on to the notion that it would be South Carolina uh, nor and the North Carolina coast. Uh, maybe if you want to, you know, be on the safe side, you make it as far north as Virginia Beach. And that would be the northern extent, I would put it. And I still won't rule out that we may wind up seeing this edge back southward again. Uh, I, I I just wouldn't wouldn't uh, I would not discount that uh, at all. 
Okay, so let me uh, let's see if we've got the new Hurricane Center advisory out, and we do. Okay, which is great. So we have um, Tropical Storm Florence. They've upped the winds to seventy miles an hour. Uh, it's at twenty four point six north, fifty four point seven west. Moving is movement is west at five. You can see the official forecast of the Hurricane Center, uh, where uh, they have their a cone of uncertainty, as they call it, and they do strengthen it to a major hurricane, uh, as they have in the previous advisories. They actually have it uh, as a hurricane by tomorrow morning, so they might they probably see, you know, they're seeing stuff on the satellite that says uh, it may be getting there a, a bit faster, and uh, looks like by 2 p.m. Monday, uh, it, they have it as a major hurricane right at the point that it crosses 60, and then of course they leave it as a major hurricane as it <clears throat> moves west northwest, uh, and then eventually a little bit more northwest, approaching uh, the uh, North Carolina, South Carolina coastline. I'm very comfortable with what the Hurricane Center has drawn here in terms of their risk zone. They're um, obviously they're thinking that the GFS is, remains the outlier, and uh, they're uh, uh, not going as far east. As, as the GFS is, uh, they did call that, uh, into, uh, they did talk about that uh, in their discussion. Uh, all the intensity models this afternoon really haven't changed very much. We're still showing uh, a large number of them taking this to Category 3 and Category 4 status within 72 hours. So uh, that, I think they're the, that, that pretty much makes sense. And in terms of the uh, hurricane track model guidance, I'm gonna I'm gonna refresh this because we may have the 18Z and I have these these this is the 12. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and you'll notice it looks like half of the models, half of the Euro, uh, the uh, European um, half of the hurricane tracking models are taking this into the into the South Carolina coastline, and then it looks like the other half are keeping it off the North Carolina coastline. With sort of nothing in the middle, I I I find that kind of kind of surprising. It it's sort of it it's sort of like it's the European that's in the middle with all of this. So you, you sort of like you've got GFS, a bunch of them that like the GFS, a bunch of them that like uh, the Canadian, and they've kind of left the European out. I'm not sure why, but let's see what the what happens when we if we got the new 18Z. All right, so here we go. I'm going to freshen it up. Nope, still only on the 12Z. Okay, so um. That is, uh, I was hoping that we would have the 18, but you know, that is kind of funny that there's just sort of gaping hole uh, along the North Carolina coast where none of the hurricane tracking models are showing any landfall there. A whole bunch in South Carolina and a whole bunch just offshore uh, in North Carolina. I I, uh, I also, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I still can't completely take off areas to the north off the table because um you know, I, I, I can envision a scenario where a system might want to try to move around the upper high, albeit very slowly. Uh, so I don't want to uh, rule out some odd possibility that this could still wind up um, recurving further north uh, once it gets very close to the Carolina coast. But, you know, I, I, I kind of think that the likelihood of that happening, uh, the probability of that happening is uh, a bit on the low side. Uh, the... Uh, the ensembles this afternoon, pretty interesting on the GFS ensembles because half of them, actually a, a large number of them, are west of the oper operational uh, GFS. Uh, in fact, the whole slew of them uh, west of the operational. There are a few of them that are east, uh, but uh, quite a few of them that are west. And that's a change from yesterday where most of them were actually east of the operational, they've been gradually seeing more and more members coming back westward. So I'm thinking that North, you know, North Carolina coast, you know, Eastern South Carolina coast and the North Carolina coast up to about maybe Elizabeth city, somewhere in there. Uh, I think that's where, um, you know, is the, at this point is the, is the more likely place uh, as far as landfall is concerned. I want to take a look also at uh, tropical depression nine, uh, first of all, let me make sure that they have not upgraded that into anything. And hang on one second. 
Um, okay, so actually, we oh, we have a Hurricane Hunter there. All right, they they do are supposed to set. Uh, we do have a new tropical storm, Tropical Storm Isaac. Uh, it is at fourteen and a half north, thirty six point six west, moving west at seven. All right, let's get back to that in a second. I'm gonna uh, instead uh, we'll uh, we'll go back. I'm gonna go to Tropical Tidbits and and uh, we'll take a look. And um, we'll bring up the uh, current storms. Tropicaltidbits.com. These are the maps that we're showing. And uh, uh, thank you, Levi Callen, for uh, letting us uh, share all of this. This is all just absolutely awesome stuff. So um, let's go. We'll actually look at the reconnaissance aircraft flight that's there. Let's see what we have. And here we go. All right, so they were supposed to wait till Monday, and then I then yesterday they said that an, an experimental uh, a, a NOAA training mission was going to go out there. Uh, I, I know it's not the clearest shot here in the world, uh, but I can tell you that the pressures that they found on the three passes that they made nine ninety one, nine ninety one, and nine ninety millibars. So that's pretty. That's 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 pretty strong tropical storm stuff. And the winds, I'm looking at some of these wind barbs. The, um, it looks like there might be certainly every bit of 55 to 60 knots because you've got that a brighter shade of red, a number of, of wind barbs there in all quadrants showing uh, uh, winds up to about 60 knots. So it's probably just shy of uh, hurricane status and, and like that's, that's probably the reason why uh, we uh, have it, uh, the Hurricane Center, uh, upgrading it to a, a hurricane uh, in short order, uh, perhaps uh, later on tonight or very first thing on Sunday morning. Uh, now, I just want to take a look. Well, I just want to make sure that was okay. That was my mistake. Yeah, okay, yeah, all right. I just noticed that there's a mission going into Olivia. That's the uh, hurricane. The, the, uh, hurricane uh, in the Pacific that is weakening into a tropical storm and is going to um, is going to that's the old 18z I was just checking those were the tracking models from yesterday is going to come into Hawaii from the northeast I want to go to Isaac just to, I'm just checking to see if there's anything new here and we can at least have this the old. This is the new one. So this is the new Hurricane Center uh, advisory on on Tropical Storm Isaac, and it's important <clears throat> because this could wind up being in the Leeward Islands, the uh, by the Southern Leeward Islands by Thursday as a hurricane. They do strengthen it uh, to a hurricane by um, two p. It looks like two. That would be two p.m. Monday. And then they have it as a hurricane, generally on a westerly course uh, heading into the Caribbean. And once it gets into the Caribbean, the big question is, because the Eastern Caribbean is notorious for having a zone of strong wind shear as to whether it's going to survive that or not. But um, it looks as if it might arrive as a, as a hurricane uh, to the Southern Leeward Islands. So you folks that are in those islands, I know how touchy uh, it, must be, it must be, how sensitive uh, after what happened last year with with Irma and Maria and even to a lesser extent uh, Jose, uh, but uh, you know you might have a threat coming here uh, for the middle part of this week. So uh, I would su suggest it would be a good idea to uh, pay attention to latest forecasts. I'm just going to uh, hope you guys don't mind. I'm going to just take. I'm going to pull up the uh, Isaac discussion. And just noticing that there's another depression here. That is Hurricane Olivia. It's forecast to weaken over time, but it's still a hurricane, by the way. Top winds are 85 miles an hour. So Tropical Storm Isaac, I'm just reading off their um, discussion, um, bottom line. Conditions appear favorable for gradual strengthening during the next 72 hours. Isaac moves Westward across the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic, best agreement with the ship's model. It's one of the many models that they look at. Uh, they do have it to, just as it approaches the 
the islands at 75 knots gusting to 85. They are talking about uh, some sheer possibilities after 72 hours, which is why they kind of knock it back down to 70. But uh, at this stage, at this stage, who knows? But uh, they do have it at uh, minimal hurricane status uh, at that point. We can take a look at the uh, satellite pictures of that too. So I, uh, I'm going to bring that. Uh, we'll, we'll go take a look at that. I'm not going to see it on this shot. I want to try to get it here. And we'll go to Gordon. I'm sorry, to uh, Isaac, which is tropical depression. It's getting confusing with all these systems running around. All right, so here's the satellite loop of of Tropical Depression 9, now Tropical Storm Isaac. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're starting to get this really blossoming area of very cold cloud tops there. That's pretty impressive. Um, I'm sold. Uh, so they upgraded this to a tropical storm, and we're likely to see this become uh, a hurricane uh, in, in the next uh, couple of days as it moves. Looks like it's going to be moving westward toward the uh, Leeward Islands. And uh, all the track model guidance uh, for that, uh, by the way, virtually all of them except two of the outliers that, that turn it. And the Canadian model was one of the ones that turned it today. Uh, but the vast majority of the hurricane tracking models take that westward uh, into uh, the Leeward Islands. We uh, actually have some weather going on this afternoon. I I'm kind of surprised at uh, the extent of the rain. Uh, that is moving out of the Ohio Valley. For those of you who are in the Northeast, or particularly in my neck of the woods, uh, it's uh, been a pretty chilly day with a freshening Northeast wind. And we've got this East-West band of rain that is set up across Northern Pennsylvania, Northern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, Long Island, and Southern Connecticut. It's running into dry air that's up in upstate New York and New England. So uh, some, I think uh, that rain should... <clears throat> dissipate to some degree tonight, but then we're going to have this weather front come back up as a warm front, and uh, that is uh, going to bring uh, more rain here. Uh, in fact, uh, the models were put pretty bullish with rainfall, and that's why we've got um, uh, flash, we've got flood watches up. Um, just a second, folks. Just going to bring, uh, bring this front and center here. I want to do just a little bit of local weather. And just talk just for a second about the rain that that's here. Hang on. I know you're seeing a double picture of me. I kind of lost my uh, my bearings. Just want to bring the new NAM. We've got the ATZ NAM, so we might as well take advantage of it. And we'll take a look at from the eyes of the eastern part of the U.S., here we go. Make sure you can see what I see. Make the map a little bit bigger there. And okay. So actually, one of the things, if you already can see that there's a problem with the NAM and that it it the radar from what I showed you on the radar and what the NAM is showing is the NAM is clearly underdoing all this, but uh, it does blossom out the rain tomorrow morning uh, from south of New York City down to the Washington, D.C., Baltimore area. You've got low pressure in, uh, in northern Kentucky moving into southwest Ohio. The height of the north is trying to press down that dry air. So from New York City north and east, it looks like the rain's going to hold off until Sunday night sometime. And then it gets in here and moves on up to the northeast. And now you start to see the appearance, at least on the NAM, uh, of Florence, which at 84 hours, and we'll do a little comparison here just to see how it lines up. So at 80, this is at Wednesday morning, 2 a.m. So on the NAM, it's at 28.3 and 69.5. Uh, I'm going to compare that to the GFS. For the same time frame, the GFS is at 20, 28, 69.1. So in reality, uh, the uh, NAM is actually, well, it's further west by four-tenths of a degree 
further north by two tenths. So uh, it's actually the dam is faster. Uh, I would think a faster moving system, if, if, if it does wind up moving faster, I think that will favor a track that is going to take it inland somewhere in um, in North Carolina, south of the, maybe south of Wilmington and possibly into northeastern South Carolina um, to the north of Charleston, somewhere in there, uh, if it moves a little bit faster, because uh, it, 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 it could, it, it, that could be telling us that the the NAB at least is seeing a um, a stronger ridge. So I I, I think that kind of covers it at this point for for all the storms. I'm not going to do uh, I'm going to come to uh, to the board with you guys for just a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to you know Helene is uh, gonna, going to be passing south of the the uh, Cabo Verde Islands. They've got tropical storm warnings up for for that area, and it's probably going to become a hurricane rather quickly. We could have three hurricanes on the map here at some point later Monday or on uh, Tuesday. So don't be uh, shocked. That doesn't happen uh, too too often. It's not, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it rare, but, um, you know, it's not something that you see every season. Uh, I, I can remember a stretch where it didn't happen for a long, long time. And I can also remember a couple of instances where we've had as many as uh, five or six storms running around. Uh L Larissa BBY, uh, PRJ Grudge, thank you for hitting Super Chat. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. I'm going to, uh, I want to give a collective hello to everybody. A lot of you are chatting and I really, really love that. I'm going to try to go back uh, to the beginning and, and run through. So, oh my God, you guys have been all ch chatting around all this. This is great. Uh, I'm just going to uh, skim through here. Um, Kosoro. Uh, the hurricane will move north when it makes landfall in the Carolinas. That would be <clears throat> what it no what what it would normally do is that you probably would see it move uh, toward the north, or at least north northwest, and get further and further inland. We have to ask ourselves about the um, the collapsing steering currents. So that might be the one variable this time around that is a, a bit different. Terence Lee, you're referring to the GFS model. <coughs> which indeed it did that, I would just be very cautious because it could be doing it uh, as a result of, of showing a monstrously low pressure of 911 millibars. And I can tell you that in my um, almost 40 years of doing this, I have never seen a hurricane that intense in that position. So uh, if that happens, it would be a first time. Uh, let's, uh, I'm, 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 uh, just running through here, folks. If I miss your question, I apologize uh, ahead of time. Uh, don't overroot for things, though, uh, Eric Shark uh, YT. I know you say you're wanting a cat, a cat one. I understand your, your weather, the weather enthusiasm behind it, uh, but you know what? Um, you know, kind of keep it tempered just a little bit. Uh, this, you know, this, uh, you know, a lot of people are touchy about it, especially after. You know, the storms of last year and, and Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Irene uh, in the east. Uh, Supreme Biscuit HD, it frustrates me that it takes so long for news to come out. By the time you realize you're in the path, uh, it's too late. I don't know if that's the case, uh, Supreme Biscuit, these days, because you know what? This is not this is not 1950, 1960, or 1970, or you get the, what I'm going at here. We're in 2018. It's you know these things uh these things are out in the public domain and on social media before they even develop so i i kind of find it hard in this day and age that somebody's going to be sitting around at this at this point especially uh not knowing that there's a tropical storm or hurricane out there so i i kind of think it's it's i i'm not sure i'm not i'm not i guess i'm not understanding your frustration because it's it's hard for me to to know how how is it that unless you're on, you're sleeping under a rock or you're or you're totally not in in um, social media, uh, that's probably the only way um, that you don't know about this. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Scott Briller is just mentioning the fact that I do have uh, a platform also on Patreon where uh, you can get an. Uh, um, more information about my thinking with regards to uh, tropical systems, weather in, in general, 
focusing you know mainly around the New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Eastern Pennsylvania area. Uh, but uh, we do uh, you know <clears throat> do extensive tropical coverage and severe storm coverage. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, join up on Patreon, because we do a lot of extra special posting for that particular platform, I'll just put the link up on here. And there's a link also on the descriptor to this uh, video. Uh, and, uh, you know, when the live stream is over, if you want to go take a look at it, uh, by all means, feel free to do, to do so. It's, it's two bucks a month. Uh, and um, I appreciate those of you who have joined and any of you who are joining. Um, uh, okay. Annabelle Lee, I guess you guys are all talking about stuff. Can we just kind of, you know, take a deep breath, uh, with regards to this? I, I get, I get sort of worked up. I, I suppose, you know, everybody, some people get all really worked up about all this stuff, you know, just kind of take a step back and take a, take a deep breath. You know, this is all stuff that we can manage while it's in the development, development phase. There's no need to go out and and panic. There's no, I know, I know there are states of emergency in the states of South Carolina, and North Carolina, but this is still offshore. Uh, Epic Shank, you want a hurricane in Ireland. You had Ophelia last year. If you remember, I covered it here on my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, who knows if you'll wind up getting another threat at some point along the way, but that was very interesting for me. And it was certainly uh, a, uh, a big hurricane uh, learning experience. Um, okay, so I'm just kind of getting a, a Joyce Mack. Had to wait for the tail end of Gordon to get a good grass soaking. It's so it actually is very dry here on Long Island. It's just it's awful. Uh, we got a little bit of rain here today, but hopefully we'll get some more uh, when we get to uh, tomorrow. Uh, just trying. The European models have a history of being more accurate. Supreme Biscuit HD. Uh, they do <clears throat> have a, a they they have. Uh, they do have a reputation for having a better handle on 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 these uh, on, on these types of systems. I totally agree with you on that. That's why I'm kind of putting a heavier weight on it. I'm having a really tough time with the GFS showing such uh, an intense uh, feature. Thank you, Rose L, for pu uh, putting uh, money pu putting some money in the till and super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, trying my best here. This is our second live stream today, by the way, and I'm thinking that. Uh, you know, there'll be a, tomorrow's going to be a bit tough for me because I have to go uh, working at WPIX TV in New York uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening. So I will live stream something in the morning, but I may not be able to live stream again until uh, midnight tomorrow night uh, because I, I, I just won't have the live streaming capabilities unless I just do it from my phone. But then um, I won't be able to bring the maps up. It'll I'll have to do it, you know, where I'm just kind of showing them uh, from my phone, shooting them off the screen. Uh, that's probably going to be the only thing I can do tomorrow. But if that's all, if that's all I got, that's all I got. Um, let's see. Caddy, I agree. Douglas, uh, Douglas Barry, I think you make a valid point. Uh, it, speculating about the Category 5 possibility is, is, is really is kind of pointless uh, because the Category 5 could be, you know, is going to be uh, uh, destructive and in some cases uh, catastrophic is a word that is used with cat fives. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, a, a, a four is, 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 um, is incredibly imposing. Uh, five, by the way, Camille, the Labor Day storm and Andrew, those are the only three category five hurricanes to hit Lake landfall in the United States uh, that, that are on record. So uh, it's, it's, it's an extremely rare event uh, to have. I, I really seriously question the GFS's pressure that low off the North Carolina coast. And I wonder if that really is the reason why it takes it as far north and east as it does. Because uh, the only thing I could think of is by generating a pressure like that, it is trying to um, uh, take the hurricane and it would respond to steering in the higher... Uh, uh, the higher layers of the atmosphere rather than the lower. In other words, it's going, it would give it a more northward component of motion, uh, which is what the GFS does at the last minute. They are, they're kind of in line, and then all of a sudden you see it sort of veer off uh, toward the north and keeping it off the North Carolina coast. I just wonder how realistic that is, and I wonder 
if that's a result of the fact that it it's it it's does this crazy thing uh, where it over deepens these storms. I, I think back to last year where with Irma, it was trying to take pressures down into the 890s in the Gulf of Mexico, and it never really got there. It was off by almost 30, you know, it was 30, more than 30 millibars off. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Hugo ever got to a Cat 5. It was a Cat 4 at landfall. I don't know that it was ever a Cat 5. I'll have to go back and, and take a look, uh, Terrence Lee. Uh, uh, that's, it was 1989, uh, I, I, but I ha I'd have to go back and, and, and take a look at that. And Hugo uh, really did a, a, a lot of damage in, in South Carolina when it came in. When that was, uh, that was in, in incredible. Um, uh, James uh, Senegal uh, using the um, Ouija board model uh, in order to uh, find out where landfall is going to be. And he came up with Charleston. Hey, you know what? If it works for you, it works for you. What can I tell you? Uh, let's see. Uh, Kyle uh, Hartraft. Uh, this seems too familiar with the anniversary of Isabel in 2000, from 2003. I have to go back and read up on what Isabel did. I vaguely remember it. Uh, go, I remember, you know, it did come into North, into the Carolinas, but I, I vaguely remember the uh, meteorology. Uh, Anthony Orr, my resident statistician, said Hurricane Hugo uh, was a Category Five hurricane at, I guess, at some point in its in its life cycle. Okay, uh, Anthony gets them right. Uh, he's uh, he's great. He does he does uh, uh, he he's the uh, unofficial statistician for my YouTube channel, and he finds out stuff that uh, I have either forgot, don't have time to research, or have completely forgotten. And uh, he's he's great. Thanks thanks for uh, putting that up, Anthony. Um, okay. Hey, ninety nine wolves. I know you told me. I think I asked you this this morning. Goat. What does that mean again? I forgot. Goat two. Um, so is there any chance of New Jersey getting part of this hurricane? Ask Mark B. I think the further north you are from the Carolinas right now, it, it, we could, we could, it, it, it seems as if um, the uh, odds of a direct landfall in areas north of North Carolina, greatest of all time. Um, gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Um I think the further north you are from North Carolina, the less your chances of are of a direct hit. And, you know, if it winds up going in and stalling, uh, I, I don't know that we're going to see very much. I can tell you this, uh, if, it, you know, looking at the tracks with the high the way it is, we could wind up being, you, we, we could wind up be sitting in partly sunny skies here on Thursday while this hurricane is going inland somewhere in the Carolinas. So just bear that in mind. Um, you're, the outside weather up here is not going to match what's going on uh, to the south. So uh, unless we see a sudden uh, sh uh, shift in the track further north, I don't see how, where that's going to come from with the upper high the way it is and the lack of any kind of trough to lift it up the eastern seaboard. Um, unless we see something really radical, uh, I'm thinking that the chances for landfalls up in the areas of the northern parts of the mid-Atlantic, southern New England, are uh, are now you know getting very very low if if there's any chance at all um, models are well they are trending north I will give you that slightly uh, they're not going crazy north um, do you think that this will take it up to Chesapeake Bay as weather tracker I would say look I would say at this point uh, given that we're not really seeing any of the global models showing it, I'm thinking that the chances of it are are a bit less. I wouldn't take anything off the table at this point. I would like to give it one more, at least one more day. Uh, but the stronger focus, I think, should be uh, in uh, in the Carolinas at this point, North and South Carolina, uh, particularly from say from Charleston. Let's say from <clears throat> at least somewhere from Charleston northeastward to about Elizabeth City, somewhere uh, in that stretch, looks to me uh, at this point to have the relatively highest risk. You can use the uh, Hurricane Center's uh, official forecast. I think uh, that map uh, where you look to see where their the uh, the cone is, 
uh, the wide area toward the end on the on the last uh, on the last day uh, before landfall covers the land areas of South and North Carolina. Uh, doesn't really get it up into northeastern North Carolina. I might want to edge it up there. The Hurricane Center, I guess, is looking at the GFS and saying we don't believe it, and at least the operational GFS because the um, the uh, uh, the members are all west of the of the operational model. All right, folks, uh, that was a pretty good live live stream. Went 50 minutes. So uh, let me just uh, say once again uh, for uh, those of you who. Uh, would like uh, uh, to uh, join my uh, Patreon platform. Uh, I'm putting a link up on the chat board right now. Uh, in fact, I can actually uh, show you what it looks like. Um, if we, uh, if you give me one second. Okay. Oh, it's being evil. Is it going to let me show you? Oh, there it is. Very, I made the, I wound up making the box very, very small. And hold on. Hang on, folks. I, uh, okay. There we go. Whoa. Why is it so big? What did I do? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm a mess today. I'm just very tired. You know, it's been, do I have an extra window capture up here? <laughs> this is really funny. I don't know what happened that it got so huge. Look at me. I'm tremendous. All right. It looks like I'm trying to make it a little smaller, but I'm not succeeding very well. Oh boy. There we go. Now we're getting there. Okay, so that's my Patreon page. Uh, and the uh, link, as I said, is on the descriptor to uh, this video. That is a bass that I caught uh, fishing uh, here on Long Island. Uh, on there, you'll find uh, you know, I, there are all sorts of uh, weather posts that I do. Uh, we're covering the tropics extensively. We also are I'm doing also live streams specifically uh, just for Patreon members. Uh, they're totally private. They're small groups, and it's uh, it's good. So this way you can um, ask me direct questions. And by the way, uh, you can message me directly on Patreon. I will respond to you as a Patreon member. So uh, the link is on the descriptor to this video. Uh, it is all of uh, two bucks a month. There you go. And uh, I appreciate very much those of you who have joined. Otherwise, you could also, my audio went real low. What is going on today? How's that? Um, hang on. Whoops. Uh, just a second. And I got to get rid of somebody. Thank you. I took care of it. Um, I hope the audio is okay. I, either that or maybe I was talking low. Uh, all right, so you got my website too, meteorologistjoechoffee.com. Uh, you can check it out there. My Facebook page, Meteorologist Joe Chaffee. Twitter is at Joe Chaffee. And uh, just, again, check out the Patreon link that is on the descriptor to this live stream or on the descriptor to this video if you're watching it uh, on a replay. Thanks very much, folks, for being here tonight. Uh, we'll do a live stream tomorrow morning and update uh, everything again. Uh, we'll have the overnight weather models, and we'll see what... Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, Davar, I got rid of him, so don't worry. He's already gone. Um, this one of the things when the crowds get big, when the weather is very active, um, we attract all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't know how he's still on there. Let me hang on. I got, I got to get rid of him. Let's let's see. All right, he should be out of here, so um, I apologize. Okay, so anyway, we'll, we'll do a live stream tomorrow uh, at uh, tomorrow morning sometime, maybe around 9 a.m. might be a good time because it's on a Sunday. Uh, we'll see what happens about doing a second live stream tomorrow evening. Otherwise, we'll be back to normal uh, on Monday, and we'll probably be doing double live streams uh, all next week as we uh, cover uh, Florence and then possibly also uh, Isaac. 
as it approaches the Leeward Islands. Have a great uh, evening, folks. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.